All right, well, I am very excited about our guest today. Uh, today is 9-11, and we are thrilled to have Phil Kuntz, former Navy SEAL, join us. In addition to have Pat Scanlon, who's on our Veterans Financial Advisor Network. Uh, this is a day that we probably all remember where we were, uh, and we know what happened. And here we want to take the time to spend time with Phil Kuntz, talk about the mindset of a Navy SEAL, talk about what it takes to prepare, some of the things that you've seen and been through, and you know, the mindset of elevating your, your thought patterns and getting over uh, adversity. And so with that, I wanted to start with uh, Pat and just doing somewhat of an introduction and uh, welcoming our guests. So uh, Phil, impressive background, uh, Navy SEAL, 78 combat missions, um, family guy, five children. Your father was a financial advisor too. Um, and uh, the myriad of, of things that you bring to the table from your experiences. Um, during the, your talk earlier today, you, you led some uh, discussion on mindset and the factor of time in the mindset of a SEAL. Chris and I were talking about that. That is a very interesting thing about um, blocking off time and, and how you perceive your day. C can you maybe elaborate on a, a couple thoughts on that? Maybe the mindset of uh, maybe sometimes it might have to go to the minutes. You mentioned uh, meals and stuff like that as being benchmarks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love to hear your comments on that. Yeah, I think sometimes, man, in life, when, when we get hit hard, yeah. and today we're celebrating the 23rd anniversary of 9-11, you know, mm -hmm. where our country got hit hard. And, uh, and so when we're battling with that, with that adversity in life and, and the ups and downs, sometimes it's good just to kind of make those baby steps, right? Yeah. It, it's good just to break down your main goal, your bigger goal into more bite-sized type pieces. And, and so I, I encourage people, I'm like, hey, take it one meal at a time, take it one small goal at a time. Like I mentioned this morning, maybe your first goal is just getting out of bed mm -hmm. in the morning, yeah. you know, struggling with depression and uh, just the loneliness and the isolation factor there and yeah. wondering if you're the only one that's that's struggling with it and what's wrong with me and, and all those thoughts, you know, that can be invasive at times. Breaking down your day into smaller size goals really helps gain that momentum. And sometimes it really is like a minute by minute, mm -hmm. just speaking that truth to ourselves, stopping yeah. those thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I've kind of have like a five S model, which we, we can get into, but I mean, it's just, it's just how do you, how do you recognize those intrusive mm -hmm. thoughts? <clears throat> Stop those thoughts, substitute, kind of distract yourself a little bit so then you can continue to, to move mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I know you spoke earlier about fear and being fearful and the difference of, of both. And you talked about a little bit of the human nature, of, you know, fear is there, it's human, it, it's just, it, it happens. But being fearful, and I took that being a former athlete and, you know, in the business that we're in and we have clients and we're, you know, fear is everywhere. You turn on the news, oh, there's, yeah. there's fear. Um, what separates, you know, Navy SEALs, what separates the Navy SEALs from others when, it, when you're thinking about, you know, fear in that moment, but not being fearful to where you freeze? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it takes a lot of training mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we, when we feel triggered, when we get <clears throat> triggered because of an mm -hmm. external uh, circumstance, sometimes it's hard to, it's like that fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. You know, right. a lot of times we freeze, and then, like we were just talking about, then you get in your own mind, and, and buds, our training is, yeah. is 70 percent, at least 70 percent wow. mental, 30 mm -hmm. percent physical, maybe 20 percent physical, because that's when the instructors want to see if you've got what it takes after your body's already been broken down, wow. and you're the worst case that you've, you, the worst condition you've ever been in in your entire life, and your body is broken. That's when they want to see if you've got the ability between your two ears to really mentally persevere mm -hmm. through the adversity that we're going through. So yeah. a lot of times it's. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's, it's recognizing, you know, the, the stuff that we're in and yeah. then just, just powering through it. Yeah. And, and to tail off on that, so you, you talked in your discussion also about the preparation that you did for one of your, your major missions in the Middle East, it's the six months that you did, and those reps that you did over those six months, uh, maybe to, to uh, join what Chris is asking, uh, what are some of the reps that you do throughout the day to keep your, your, yourself in that positive vein to overcome those negativities, uh, whether in your ministry or in, in uh, your own everyday life, maybe dealing with uh, things that a lot of soldiers still have, in PTSD, any of those topics. Yeah, yeah, There's a, it's, it's a daily fight sometimes, uh, just wrestling with yeah. some of the operator syndrome, which yeah. is what I've been diagnosed with, and, and just the, the daily uphill battles that that is, both physically, 
I've got herniated discs in my back. Mm -hmm. My my left labrum is is torn 340 degrees in my left shoulder, and and so it's still maintaining that positive mindset even in the midst of doing pull-ups, even in the midst of of you know doing exercises mm -hmm. and, and really telling yourself, hey, just get to the next minute, yeah. just get to the next five minutes, yeah. you know, just ca just conquer that hill one at a time. And kind of circling back too to some of the fear aspect. I mean, a lot of people are like, "Oh, you're a Navy SEAL. Like, you're not afraid of anything, yeah. Yeah. right?" And it's like, eh, I, I'm, "I'm still a human being. You know? Like, you cut me, I'm still going to bleed, right? I put my pants on just like everybody else does. So, uh, it, it's okay." Yeah. Especially for the yeah. viewers. It's yeah. okay to feel yeah. fear. Yeah. It's okay to right. feel fear. That's a yeah. human, God-given mm -hmm. emotion for us to feel fear it's at times. However, it's what do you do with that fear? Mm -hmm. Do you allow that fear to overwhelm yeah. you, to paralyze you, where, where it's, that's all you can do is just think about yeah. what-if scenarios yeah. and worst-case scenarios. And before you know it, you're all spun up up here, and you're paralyzed, and you're freaking out, and you can't make any forward progress. Your creativity goes down the toilet, and it's, it's really hard to be successful wow. when, you're, when you're paralyzed with that fear. So recognizing that fear, but then what are the tools that you use to kind of move through that mm -hmm. fear? And one of those we talked about is just making those small goals, yeah. just that next hill to yeah. take. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that you know it. Like we're, we're all in business, and you know we do a lot of training for younger advisors or young business owners. And a lot of this can be fearful at, at, at first, and you can always smell when fear is in the water. I, you know, I'm not sure how you, what instincts yeah. we have, but yeah. you know when yes. someone's in front of you and they're just whether or not they're not confident. Maybe they haven't prepared like what have, have you talked about, mm -hmm. and they're not ready for the moment. And so I read your book. It's a phenomenal book. I was really impressed. Uh, I'm a fitness, you know. Uh, uh, one of those guys is big in the fitness, and I noticed that you work out five five days a week, and you also do cardio one uh, an hour a week. What about the fi the, the physical side complements the mental side of what we do and what you do? Yeah, it's huge. So I, I work out a minimum of five days. Minimum. Sometimes I try to Got get it. my <laughs> six day, yeah. but my Same, not yeah. but my non negotiable every day is an yeah. hour of cardio where mm -hmm. I'm pushing myself, mm -hmm. and I. There's, there's something magical that happens when you push yourself physically at the end of a workout. Right. You never feel bad about yourself, no. right? You're always like, yeah, no like I got it. Yeah. You know, like I crushed that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and then it motivates, you know, to get, yeah. to get that next workout, to, to push your heart rate just a little bit more, you know, to burn 10 or 50 extra calories, you know, on, on the elliptical or the treadmill or whatever you're doing, you know, calisthenics or weightlifting. So it, it is, it's, there's, a, there's a, a very natural flow between mm -hmm. the physical in the mental, yeah. in your mind, you can accomplish far more than you think you can. Wow. You know, and, and especially as Americans, mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me on my soapbox, yeah, but yeah. there's a lot of comfortable <laughs> Americans. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people that are very apathetic, yeah. that are yeah. very comfortable, yes. that are complacent, and they're just, they're fine, just kind of meeting the bare minimum type thing. And no one really seems to do mm -hmm. anything hard anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so a, a lot of times what I encourage, I'm a life and business coach, and one of the things I encourage my clients to do, I'm like, look, like just, just do one hard thing a day. Wow. You know, take the stairs mm -hmm. instead of the elevator. Mm -hmm. You know, walk your yeah. dog an extra lap around the block or right. run an extra mile or write that letter mm -hmm. that you've been putting off or that email that you've been putting wow. off. Say you're sorry to somebody. Mm -hmm. Ask for forgiveness. Wow. I mean, it, yeah. it doesn't have to be a physical thing, but just do something hard to get mm -hmm. you outside of your comfort yeah. zone yeah. because every time we do, guess what? We grow mm -hmm. a little bit more as a person. And I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. I, I want to become Philip Coons 2.0. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and 3.0. And <laughs> right? So I got a lot more life to live and a yeah. lot more to experience and a lot of growth. But I do I really do try every day to, to push myself a little bit more wow. and just do something hard that day. Yeah, and it gets harder the longer you 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 wait. The, every year you take off, it gets harder and harder. Your body ages and it's harder to maintain. So it's great to hear. That was very inspiring. When I read that, I was very impressed. Yeah, you, you, have, you have to build that discipline. Yeah. You're not just going to wake up and all mm -hmm. of a sudden immediately have the yeah. discipline, immediately be like, all right, I'm motivated. I mean, it takes, it, it does take a little bit. It's like that crawl, walk, mm -hmm. run that we mm -hmm. go through in mm -hmm. training in the SEAL teams, mm -hmm. right? We're not running right away, yeah. right off the bat. It's a crawl, walk, run. And so it's, it's developing that mindset. Mm -hmm. And after about 30 to 40 days, you start to mm -hmm. develop that habit. Yeah. And then it becomes a lot easier. But let's face it, it sucks. For yeah. those first 30, 40 days, I mean, yeah. literally picking yourself up and forcing yeah. yourself to do something that, and it, maybe it's like diet, right? It's like, yeah. no, don't go for that Twinkie. Don't go for that Snickers. <laughs> right. Don't go for that extra piece of pizza. Yeah. You know, like, don't do it. it you know, so it, it doesn't, have, again, have to be physical. It's, it, a lot of this is discipline. nutrition. This is discipline. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. It's, and it's avoiding the path of least resistance. And going back to the sports analogy, you got to take your reps. 
And, and whether you're Michael Jordan who took, he never stopped shooting free throws his entire career. Yeah. And as a, as a Navy SEAL, you mentioned that, uh, that you guys all do your reps, you're always, always going over your rituals. I'm curious in, in that way, how does this tie into your ministry that you, that you have in Colorado? Can you share a little bit about that? So uh, it kind of goes back. I've been working with child trafficking for about 15 years. When I first got out of the military, I was a, a contractor. I was a sensitive site exploitation instructor. And it's a whole other conversation for another time. And then it was really kind of cool because the door opened for me to step into pastoral ministry. So I moved from Fayetteville, North Carolina, where I was a contractor, back to Cincinnati, Ohio, where I was born and raised and became a community life pastor at that point. I was there for about a, a couple of years and then did a transfer out to Aurora, Colorado for another year and a mm -hmm. half in the same ministry. And then I went back to, to Denver Seminary to get my master's in leadership. Wow. But it was during that time I was introduced to this, this very real issue that a lot of Americans are either blindly turning uh, their eye to or just aren't aware. They're a little naive. But the United States is the number one consumer in the world with human trafficking. Yes. Yeah. It's a $250 billion industry. And uh, I don't, I won't go into some of the details, but I mean, it's, it's very lucrative because you can use that person multiple, multiple <clears throat> times. It's not like a drug dealer where, you know, it's like, okay, you have the drugs, I get the money and then we're gone. That's why it's so lucrative. And uh, I tell people there's a special yeah. place in hell for those for those people who traffic uh, kids. So I've been to Cambodia, I've been to Thailand, uh, down in the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm, working wow. with the ATB, the Anti-Trafficking Bureau, yeah. spent some time working with Destiny Rescue. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> who knows, once, once my kids are all out of the house, all five kids, my youngest yeah, is yeah. 11, so yeah. I've got like seven or eight more right. years. Wow. But once the kids are out of the house, I'm like, honey, my wife, I'm like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's time to, uh, yeah. to maybe go and, and, and spread our wings a little bit internationally and maybe yeah, and jump back into, into that industry a little bit too. That's awesome. Well, I know you've brought some of your gear yeah, with us. Yeah, let's get into some of this. Share, well, <laughs> I almost, I almost want to reach in and kind of uh, smell, because gear has oh, yeah. a certain smell, <laughs> it does. and it has a recall to it. It's going to bring, but I'm gonna you, avoid it's gonna, that. It's gonna bring yeah. you back I'm to, gonna your, avoid that, to the glory days. Go ahead, let's, right. let's get into this, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I travel. Uh, you, you know, I'm a, I'm a public speaker, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been doing yeah. this for 10 years. So one of the things that's unique about me is I bring out some of my gear. I call it an adult show and tell. Right? <laughs> yeah. I like talking about it, awesome. passing it yeah. around. So I've got uh, one of the sets of H gear, harness gear that I used uh, during my second and subsequent deployments uh, right here. Our primary weapon is our M4 in the mm -hmm. SEAL teams. Yeah. Our secondary weapon is a SIG yeah. 226. So my SIG, SIG went six right layer. here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I had pockets here for my magazines, for my mm -hmm. M4, for my SIG. There's uh, pockets to the left and right here. There's there's four different types of grenades yeah. that we use. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're well yeah. aware. Yeah. Smoke grenades, frag grenades, thermite grenades, mm -hmm. concussion grenades. Wow. So we load those out. Our comms system goes on here. Yeah. And uh, and then this set of H gear is pretty unique because it holds both sets of my body mm -hmm. armor inside of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are this is my body armor. You can pick it up. Yeah. You that's, want. that's pretty yeah. for anyone yeah. watching. So the weight really does add up. So when you're a full loadout, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> depending on what weapon system you're carrying, you're either 50 or 80 Pretty pounds thin. heavier. And, and people forget that, that you're not just walking down the street going to 7-Eleven for a slurpee. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. the terrain ha is irregular. Oh, yeah. The, oh. the temperatures. Yep. The, 95 yeah. to 100 degrees yeah. at night in the, yeah. in the Middle East. Wow. Yeah. And then to your point like earlier today about the uh, sometimes the endless days that go on into perpetuity without sleep yep. and that dealing through that deprivation yep. every day all the time, those where those reps come in where you've done it, you're going to yep. do it again and yep. you're prep for it. Let's, I want to hear talk about a little what's going on here. With my helmet, yes. Yeah. So, so that helmet is ergonomically designed to be able to stop a 7.62 round. Uh, this this soft here is is calibrated to stop mm -hmm. a nine mil mm -hmm. round. This plate right here is a five five can stop That's a five really five six round. And is this Kevlar? Is it, it is. Kev it's still Kevlar. It is. Still. Yep. Yep. And then both of these together uh, can stop a mm -hmm. seven six two round. So that one is is designed to be able to stop mm -hmm. a seven six two round. It's about four and a half five pounds. Oh. Our night optical devices fit right there on the on the. Uh, on the harness right there, and, uh, and they're about two pounds. Mm -hmm. So our nods mount, that's our nods, our night optical devices, mm -hmm. or our NVGs, mm -hmm. right? So our NVGs fit right there on the mount. They're an additional two pounds, and then we have a two-pound counterweight in the back mm -hmm. as well, too. So we've got about 
about nine to 10 pounds on our head at any given wow. night while we're, while we're operating mm-hmm. along with our loadout and our body armor mm-hmm. and everything else. So it's, yeah, you wow. get, you don't want to be that guy, yeah. right? Talking about an athlete, like, you, you don't want to be that guy that brings yeah. the whole team down, right? right. And mm-hmm. oftentimes, yeah. like you said, like our infill or exfill routes, they're, they could be four or five kilometers, yeah. you know, which is two to three miles. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it does, it, it, it's, it's hard. Wow. Well, it's you hard. definitely have to be in shape. So I, I totally understand the minimum. Yeah. Five workouts, <laughs> five workouts a day plus an hour of cardio. Well, let's be honest. I'd be in a straight jacket right now if I didn't get my my workouts. You know, my wife would be like, yeah. "It's uh, it's time for you to go you to the gym." A little tense. Yeah, yeah, right. Take 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 a walk for exactly. an hour. Yeah. And and let me just say this: like, I'm not a gym rat. I actually, I, I don't prefer to go to mm-hmm. the gym. Yeah. If I could, if I could maintain my physical fitness while watching Netflix and yeah. eating pizza at home, like yeah. all day long. Hawaii Five O re- reruns. We, we talk about. <laughs> we, I go in and I say, Chris, what do you think about this this new powder? You know, we're talking about this all the time. Yeah. We're all in the same thing. We're doing yep. this. We're doing the pr- the protein and everything else. Workouts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got early workouts, late workouts. We're fitting them in where we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, yep. we 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 have a gym in our office on the third floor, yep. just for you know this this day in shape. But this is impressive. So. Um, to transition a little bit, you, you wrote a book. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Um, and for the viewers, what was, you know, what was some of your thoughts around the book and you know, some ideas uh, you know, to share with the book? And I don't want to give anything away, but yeah. feel free and sh- sure. enlighten us on that. So the truth behind my trident, our trident is our military insignia. This is the first trident that I was ever pinned. This is what we call our bird or our okay. Budweiser. So once you're pinned your trident, you're officially a Navy SEAL. So the truth behind my trident is, hey, what... I want to pull back the curtain a little bit, walk through my own personal journey in the SEAL teams, show the public really what an average day in the life of a SEAL looks like. Yeah. Because one day, one day I, it dawned on me after after seeing some of the movies that are out there, right? The Zero Dark Thirties, The Lone Survivors, Thirteen mm-hmm. Hours, yeah. uh, you know, all of those. Hollywood does a really good job of portraying the missions, in my opinion, of SEALs, and they actually have active duty Navy mm-hmm. SEALs right there on set teaching them what our standard operating procedures are. And, and I'm like, guys, I understand yeah. that Hollywood wants to make a truckload of money with this yeah. movie, but you guys realize Americans aren't the only ones watching these movies yeah. too, right? right? And we're giving a lot right. of, of our ROEs, our roles of engagement and SOPs away on the big screen. So mm-hmm. that's when I, I, I figuratively hit the pause button one day and I just calculated out how much time is actually spent yeah. boots on the ground conducting our missions. Mm-hmm. It's about 3%. Three percent of our time. The other ninety-seven percent of our time is all in preparation, yeah. and that's what I really wanted to 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 unpack yeah. a little bit in my book. Yeah. yeah. So for many of our viewers and uh, are in two different stages. Many of them are starting out business, their their own business, or new advisors, and some have been in the business for thirty years. Uh, what would you give someone starting today or tomorrow? What kind of advice would you give them? And then what advice would you give someone, the thirty-year veteran? who is just looking to take their game to the next level? Yeah, perfect. Great question. So ironically, being a successful advisor is about the same attrition rate as it is to be a SEAL. About 80%, 80, 90% of the guys and the girls who try to be a, a successful advisor end up washing out. Yeah. And uh, probably for different reasons, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, right? No, just, Teaser. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of them. Literally. You're not doing drown proofing yeah. and, and, right. and surf towards yeah. you, right? And all that. Wow. Yeah. But but the but the mentality is still the same. Yeah. And so for me, when I when I went in uh, to to BUDS, which stands for basic underwater yeah. demolition school, it's the first block of our training. I told my my wife at the time, I said, I would rather die than quit. And I was dead serious. I was like, I drew that line in the sand and I said, I'm not quitting. So I either I, I would rather die than quit. And I'm a man of faith. And so for me, I'm like, well, if I die, I meet Jesus. And if I don't die, I become a Navy SEAL. So it was a win-win for me at that point, right? It's like, either one's fine with me, right? It's it's good. And so I think it's that mentality, and I don't want to sound cliche, but it's that it's that don't quit kind of mentality. As soon as you open the door, and this applies to like working out too, as soon as you crack that door a little bit, like, well, if it gets too hard, or well, if I get rejected too much, or well, if I, you know, whatever that that is, if it gets this bad, then I might consider, you know, punching out. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that's just a that's a defeatist closed-minded mindset already from the beginning. Wow. And those guys that have that mindset, I guarantee you, you're going to wash out. You're mm-hmm. going to quit. You're going to end up DORing or dropping yeah. on request, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is what the candidates do in BUDS. Yeah. So it's that mindset. It's yeah. that mindset of like, I'd rather die than quit. It's like, uh, you're not giving yourself any other option. It's yeah. like, I'm going to make it. 
or I'm going to die trying. I love that. Right. That's so that's for the new guys, for the older guys who have been in the industry for a long time. I think circling back to what we were talking about earlier is don't be complacent. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't be that advisor that thinks I've been in the industry for yeah. 30 years. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable. I've got all the products that I need, you know, and, and I'm good. I'm comfortable. I would I would challenge them to continue to learn, to continue to 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 update their products, to continue to, to take the meetings from the wholesalers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. and, 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 and as, as well as, as identifying some training, additional training maybe yeah. that they can go through, like active listening training mm -hmm. or empathy training, yeah. right? I mean, if you're my client and you come in and, and, and you just had to put your parents in hospice wow. or your wife just got a crazy diagnosis yeah. or, you know, your kids got into a car accident, mm -hmm. what life happens, right? My job, is to empathize with you. Yeah, yeah, My awesome. job is to show you how much I care. Uh, and empathy is mm -hmm. different than sympathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy is identifying the emotion within someone and connecting with that emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's loneliness, it's isolation, it's hurt, it's fear, whatever that might be. Connecting with that forms that bond. So for the seasoned advisors, I'd say, what is some additional training that you can go through to really help you stay current and mm -hmm. remain, have that humble learning posture and don't get too comfortable. Because wow. complacency, comfortability leads to complacency. Complacency leads to apathy, mm -hmm. and apathy leads to atrophy. Wow. Yeah. And once you're atrophy, it's dead. It's wow. gone, right? So that's my, that's my two right. cents. Well, that was powerful. Um, and with that, I want to thank the two of you for joining us today um, here in Chicago on 9-11. Uh, thank you to State Street for being a great partner. Thank you, Phil, for making the flight to Chicago. Uh, for our viewers, thank you all for joining in. And we'll have the link below for uh, the book if you're interested. Thank you all.